I'm going to show you how to add some background images to your headings or your text. It's a really simple process using a little bit of CSS and we're not applying any image masking either. So you might have a heading and you want to add some background images and you can see the examples we're going to work through. At the moment over here we have a standard heading. And what a lot of people kind of used to think was, well, I'll just go in and give a background image. That will give a background image behind the wording as well. You could, if you want, go and add a background image and then go and add some image masking as well. But then what if you wanted to change the size of the letters or the wording? You have to go and get another image mask. And I want to show you something or a way to do it that is so much more versatile and easy for you to do on the fly. So the standard heading you can see there, there is no background image going on. This heading is a copy of what we have above and don't worry about it disappearing when I click on it, it's just because I've clicked on it. It's the copy of what we have above and then we've added in a bit of CSS. So let me just show you that heading. If we go over, there is nothing on there. Uh, there's not even a text color by the way because we're going to do everything within the CSS and I've zoomed in to make it easier for you to see. So inside of our heading, select all, if you want to give it a class name, you could do. We've got background image and this is the image I'm applying. OK, so as long as the image is in your media library, of course, you could get it from elsewhere. You just got to pop the URL in. But it makes much more sense to actually feed it from your media library in terms of speed and you don't want any performance lag. So I've gone and picked a particular image. And when I've said background clip text, web background clip text again these two are quite important make sure you've got them and then i've gone and set my color to be transparent the color transparent relates to the actual wording so if i'd gone and given this wording a color of red that would now be visible on top of the background image so you wouldn't see the background image which is why i did not set any color so color transparent uh, because the background image is the background image so the color of the font or the heading or the text is transparent. Therefore, you can see the background image. And then I'm going to set it to be cover and center center. So if you decide you want to manipulate it, so you want to have contain or you want to have top center or left center. Well, not left center, but you get the idea. You can do all of that. That CSS, that's how simple and easy it was without any funky image masking. Because when you do image masking, which is great, and then your client goes, well, can we tweak this or tweak that? You then have to go back to the drawing board and recreate it. Now we've got a version over here where I've only applied the background image to one particular letter. Let's go and have a look at this. And this is where we are now going to be doing something a little different with regards to the actual text. So in the second one, we just had the word unleash. In the third one, which is what we're looking at over here, we've got H1 class styled heading. So I've given it a class name and this is important because we're going to ensure the background image applies to that particular class. So I've said class styled heading. Sorry, I've said that wrong. The heading is styled heading, but then we've got highlight for the letter A. So we're going to apply style for the heading for all of them. But then for anything that sits between this particular class, which is the letter A, you can see the code up there that will now have the background image. So when we now go to the advanced tab and we go to the CSS, we have a bit more code. And again, it's really simple to do. The styled heading, so everything is now going to be that size and it's going to have this weight and whatever. You could have done this for the second heading as well. So I'm just showing you how you could set it either in the typography or you could do it in the CSS. And if anyone is struggling with understanding CSS, hey, I'm in run from Web Squadron. Go over to our website. Link is in the video description. Go and sign up and start to engage and learn and boost your skills with our CSS course. Hey, people are loving it and so will you. Then we get down over here to the highlight. So the letter A sits within the class highlight. And this is where I'm now applying my background image. And basically, it's kind of like what we had above. The only difference, I now have display um, inline block because now you have to main sh maintain you have to ensure it all sits within the same line. That's why you have inline block. So if you wanted to apply it to individual um, letters, you could do. I mean, don't forget, though, if we just go back over to the content, I've applied highlight to the letter A. You could, if you want, apply another class to another letter. So say the letter S. And then when you get to the CSS down here, let's say you went and called it highlight red, right? You'd have this code and then underneath you'd have another one for highlight red. 
And now you might go and apply a reddish image or you might do some saturation or contrast or just something. You can apply that. And because it's CSS, if you don't want to apply it for, say, the mobile, you know, min, max, width and all of that, you could do. Or maybe you want to apply a different orientation. So having center for the background position on the desktop is great. But when you get to the mobile, it now needs to be bottom left or something. You could do that because we're just using CSS. Let's go to the fourth one. And this is where we're being a little bit more funkier now. I'm making the A bigger. It kind of follows the same kind of rule as what we had above. I've got my styled heading number two and highlight two. Why have I got the number two? Well, that's because I've already applied the style here. And, you know, it's going to get a bit messy if I don't do that. But if you're applying it, you probably don't need to have the number two. But again, the letter A has its own class name. Go to your advanced tab, go to the custom CSS, and you can see here we're doing a little bit more. So this is where I'm now just justifying my items. Because when you increase the size, things get a little bit messy. So you can see the code over here. So our styled heading has a particular style. Then when we get to the letter A, which is highlight number two, you can see that I'm applying my background image, my cover, my contain, all of that. I've even set my font size to be 200. So if I was to go and do something like that, I've now made it smaller. Let's pop it back to two. I do want to point out, though, that when I made it bigger, it actually did this. So you can see that we have a bit of a gap there. And I did not like that gap. So I added in a bit of margin to my letter A to say minus 19. And surprisingly, minus 14 worked a little. In fact, it might be a little bit too much. Maybe I only should have gone for minus 13. But you can apply a bit of margin to bring your letters in a bit. But look at this one over here, the final one we're going to cover. This is where I've got my letters overlapping. I hope you can see that on screen, overlapping the highlighted color. So let's go and look at it. We've now got styled heading three and highlight three. So the last three, they kind of follow the same kind of pattern. Let's now go to the advanced tab, custom CSS, and I, you can now see that I'm using a bit of Z indexing. Surprisingly, though, uh, for the highlight letter, I had to apply minus one. So if I go and do a zero, even though the other wording is a Z index two, it still was um, in front of the wording. And I found that I had to do minus one. And for anyone that goes, but won't that put that behind the container as well? This container has a background color. So you can still see the letter A. And then you've got the style headings. So the non-highlighted uh, text is in front. So these are multiple ways of, and let me just get rid of that, that you can apply a bit of variation within your headings without having to worry about image masking. Now, there's nothing wrong with image masking. Let me be clear. There's nothing wrong with that. They're super versatile and brilliant to use. But if, like, you're working on a website and then you suddenly go, oh, you know what? We've got this background image and it's really, it's an all right image, but wouldn't it look better as the background of the heading or the text or the wording rather than, like, look, you have a background image and then you stick black text or white text or gradient text and then the text ain't too clear. You go, oh, we've got to add a bit of a gradient. Oh, no, now that's kind of like made the image go a bit dull or something. Mm, maybe we need to add a child container and add a shadow, text shadow. And you spend so much time pissing about on that. This on a plain white background, black background, white text, all of that you could do just like that. Hey, I'm Imran Web Squadron. Codes are in the video description. If not, there'll be the pinned comment in the video. Take care. See you soon. Bye. Never break. Always fight. Never quit. Do it right. Play the game. Win it life. Have no shame. There's no time.